Hey guys, Jeremy Mattingly, CrappieMonster.com. Uh, we are back in Kentucky after a tournament with American Crappie Trail on Grenada Lake, uh, Mississippi. We got back and, well, it's raining, so we're trying to find something to do indoors. So we're going to do a breaking down water uh, video to help you eliminate water so you don't waste all your time uh, chasing fish down. Because it is true, you'll hear it time and time again, 90% of the fish live in 10% of the water. Well, the one thing you don't hear is 90% of the fish are caught by 10% of the fishermen. And this is one of the little tricks that we've learned to help us find the fish faster because every doggone uh, tournament we've been to this year has been a brand new lake. Something we've never been on before, we've never set eyes on before four days before the tournament in our official practice period. So in the weeks leading up to that, I've got my Navionics on my iPad and I'm studying, I'm studying, I'm watching every video I can find of uh, uh, people catching fish on these lakes and different times of the year to try to help pattern these fish before we get there. And this is just one of the ways that we try to uh, save time in our pre-fishing. And well, uh, I come to find out a lot of people do it similar to this. Now, uh, behind me, I've started drawing a little bit. You'll have to forgive my artistic capabilities because they ain't much. This is the basic layout of Grenada Lake. You've got the schooner and you've got the yellow busha arm, okay? The very first thing you want to do when you look at a lake uh, before you get there is figure out where the dam is because you've got to know which way that the water is running. Well, in Grenada, the dam's down here in this corner right here. Coming straight out of that corner, turns to the right to go up the yellow busha. If you go straight up uh, to the left, you'll go up the schooner and there's a main lake point right here. This is actually in the water and here's a point and it's got a couple of little humps on it. They come up to about 12 foot in depth. And uh, that was the very first spot that I singled out before I ever got there because these crappie, they wanna be able to uh, take a break. So they're looking for eddies. And you won't be able to find the eddies if you don't know that the water is coming towards this dam. That way you understand which way the water's flowing so you know which side of this point you wanna get on. In this one, it's a, a different situation. You have a flow coming in both directions. But the main river basin is closer to this bank on the Elabusha and it comes out away from this point coming down the schooner. So it gives you a little eddy right here on top of this, uh, at the edge of this point with this hump, you've got a little eddy right here and right here. So immediately where we went fishing was right in there. We wanted to try to check it out and see just exactly what kind of fish we could find. Now after that, the crappie most generally relate to a channel. I don't care what kind of lake you're on, uh, there'll be dips, holes, uh, we call them ponds, uh, a dip in the bottom of the uh, river. And they'll be somewhere around that channel or that pond. That way they can take a break from uh, fighting the current to catch their bait fish. They'll run up, catch their bait fish, and they'll go right back down. So when you hear somebody say fish where they live, then fish live in that pond. They've got to have a break. They need their couch to sit on, so they drop down in there. And when they get ready for a bag of Doritos, they run up and grab it out of the pantry and go back to the couch. That's the easiest way that I can put it so that you, uh, to make it understandable, because I've had an absolute crash course in this. Uh, I've talked to every pro that I could possibly talk to, every doggone local that uh, fishes these uh, lakes here by the house, they all hold a piece of information that is useful. So listen when they're talking. Uh, they, they've been there, they've done that. And for a beginner, uh, which two years ago, I was. And I've had an unbelievable crash course in crappie fishing. But they will relate to that channel. So let's go back to the channel. It's, your channel's coming in right here. As the lines get closer together on your Navionics, you know that it's a steeper ledge. 
You hear people talk about ledge fishing. They're getting right here, and here's a flat uh, in uh, Grenada. You've got a flat. You've got the river channel with a fairly steep ledge, but it's not about four foot deep between the channel and the flat. So we had uh, 18 to 24 foot of water in the channel up in here. And then we went up to 13 uh, to 15 foot of water on the flat. And then there was another ledge that a lot of tournament quality crappie came off of, up above it. And then there's another flat that's say eight foot deep. So there were some of us that were targeting the actual river channel to the schooner and the edge of that flat as we were spider rigging down there, we were coming right down the edge of the channel to catch that ledge and catch the flat in case they're running up to grab their bait fish and going back down. There's uh, stumps and stick ups just riddled the water in here. And every one of those makes an eddy for them to sit behind. And we did find that in this area, it didn't matter if that stump was eight inches 40 inches. They were hanging behind every single doggone one of them. And then uh, some other people were working this ledge. Actually, uh, about 70% of the field that was down there at the Grenada Tournament was working this ledge or one similar to it over in the Yellabusha. So ledge fishing, in my mind, is completely where it's at when it comes to crappie fishing. But there's something else you need to understand about crappie. It's probably close to 11 miles between spawn, or the spawning flats on Grenada. You've got back the yellow bush, there's a bridge, and back behind that bridge is where everybody says that's where they spawn, that's where they spawn. Well, that's fine. Uh, I, I'm sure that they do. But I, I want you to get this across to you. There's also a spawning flat back here, so you've got two huge fingers with spawning flats at the back. Uh, these fish are not going to travel 20 miles after they spawn. They're just not going to do it. So the channel that we fished was the first deep part they could get to coming out of their spawn, which uh, we're fishing in September here, okay? They're in their winter patterns or fall patterns, and they were in deeper water. But I don't care what time of year it is, you can find crappie in seven foot or less of water. Any doggone lake you want to go to, you can indeed find fish in less than seven feet of water. That's a good starting point. Go back to the back, work your way out, hit any pond or ledge that you come across on your way out. Hopefully you already know where they're at because the Navionics is only like 10 bucks a year. I have it on my iPad, my cell phone, and it's 10 bucks and I'm able to share it. So when you get back to the spawning flat, Check it out, uh, find you the brush pile with your electronics or uh, just fish visual cover if you don't have any electronics. Electronics is very hard to uh, not have and catch fish. Um, I started out with not any electronics whatsoever so I had my iPad with my Navionics laying down beside my leg so I could fish the contours, not the brush piles. Well, very shortly I found that the brush piles is where it's at for the most part. So these fish, are coming out of their uh, spawning grounds. They'll find the first deep hole or the first big structure they can hang on to it. And then they'll end up moving on out into the deeper water for the majority of the fish. Now, there's a lot of them that stay back, like I said, in seven foot or less of water. So do not just take that uh, piece of water for granted and pass it up. You've got to stop. Because a lot of times that's where your pigs are gonna be laying up at. Uh, a lot of people will tell you, uh, that if you're catching small fish, go to the other end of the lake. Well, when, when I heard that, I thought, well, I guess maybe the big fish only school together and the, the big fish will run from this arm to that one. No, that's not the case. The reason you're going to the other end of the lake to try to find uh, bigger fish is because the bait on that side's better or the minerals in the water is better. It's just like that if, uh, if I had a twin brother and one of us took vitamins and one of us didn't, and one of us ate well and the other one didn't, he would naturally be bigger than me. So 
all it is is the it's a richer environment. Think of it as two totally separate ecosystems. You have the schooner ecosystem, you have the yellow busha ecosystem. So it's two totally groups of fish that will never see each other in their entire lives until they drop the bottom out of the lake and they all get sucked out to the main water. And when that happens, of course, there's great big humps out here in the middle of the, the main lake. And then fish are gonna be sitting somewhere around them humps. And if you got time to drop a brush pile, right there is where I would do it. Right on the backside of that hump or right here. And the reason is when they're drawing water, you can fish this side. And if they shut it completely off, you can fish the other side. And then fish will be somewhere around that, uh, that hump. Now, let's try a different lake. Try a totally different scenario. Uh, river fishing. I fish Ohio River a lot. And if I got my choice between a river and a lake, I'm gonna fish a river system. Uh, Ohio River down at Camelton. Okay, uh, well, I guess I'll have to park the other way. That river actually does run south. So we've got our Camelton Dam down here. We've got a couple of bends that the river makes. And then the very first spot that I would fish looking at that is I would go looking to find the dam, knowing the water is coming in this direction, uh, going south. I would look at the very first tributary as close to that dam as what I can. As long as you've got enough room I'm gonna go ahead and move this down here where you can see it a little bit better. Uh, that first tributary you saw in uh, a couple of my videos is uh, coming right off the side of the Ohio River. And it's the very first one you come to, uh, dam is down here. All right, there's the dam. Uh, if you come back up river to the very first tributary, you've got nine foot of water back here. You got 50 foot of water out here. Uh, over here is six foot of water. So my personal preference, first place I'm gonna go, is go check out the nine foot of water. Cause to me, that is the perfect depth for year round crappie fishing is nine to 10 foot of water. So all those videos that we put on here from Ohio River, they come from right there, buddy. Right there. Uh, we weren't very far off the main water which the crappie will eventually head out to the main water. Uh, but you'll find them year round back here, uh, anywhere, uh, anywhere deeper than six foot, you're gonna find crappie. So that would be where that I would start in a river system is to go to the first tributary off of that dam. And then I'd head to the back of it, go to the back and start working your way out. Now, if that uh, below Camelton on the main lake, there's a lot of very large 15 foot flats. Uh, here's Camelton Dam again. Here's the main river coming down. Well, you got 15 foot flats and you got a 35 foot channel in spots. Well, these 15 foot flats, I'm gonna come off the side of them with my side and down engine and I'm gonna find these brush piles. I'm gonna find these logs and the bigger the better in that river system because the current's so hard. So the crappie wanna be behind something that's not going to move on them all the time. So they're going to, you find a log 50 inches around, you better hang around because they're going to be fish of all sorts around it. And especially crappie because they're not endurance fish. They're going to come up for just a, just long enough to get them a bite to eat and they're going to go straight back to the couch guys. They're going to open that bag of Doritos and they're going right back to the couch. I hope that you were able to uh, get a little bit of information from this the biggest thing is try to fish eddies. Uh, the biggest thing is try to fish eddies. You have to know which end of the lake your dam is on. You have to know, and that'll let you know which way the water's flowing. You cannot find an eddy if you don't know which way the water's going. Uh, we're gonna try to do some more videos. Uh, hopefully after it stops raining, we're gonna get out. Uh, we've had people ask about uh, setting up on a brush pile, how to properly mark each end of your brush pile and then fish it. And as soon as it quits raining, we're going to get out and get you another video uh, like that. Remember, subscribe to Crappie Monster here on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, Instagram. 
I don't care where you where you watch this video at, just watch it. Uh, but remember, hit subscribe, that way you can stay up to date on all of our future videos. Thanks guys, have fun on the water.